On this Charge Overland adventure, I head to Nevada with some friends to see if the Rivian can keep up with a couple Tacomas on a three-night overlanding trip. We check out the Valley of Fire State Park in Nevada and set up camp in a few awesome spots along a 26-mile off-road trail. But our goal of getting out of California and escaping the rain didn't quite go as planned. Stay tuned. A long Friday evening drive after work had us getting to camp in the middle of the night. We all set up really quickly and immediately just got to bed. We had a lot of exploring and off-roading to do over the next few days. We just got up a few minutes ago. We got in very late last night, so we all slept in a little bit. Um, but we got camp set up behind me here, and we are just outside Valley of Fire right now. So we're gonna get some food in us and then head into the park and do some hiking. All right, we just got into Valley of Fire here and the rocks are way brighter orange and red than I actually expected them to be. So this place is really cool so far. We just got into the park though, so we're gonna drive around um, and there's quite a bit of hiking to do. So we're gonna pick a few hikes and uh, just do some exploring now. Eating a quick lunch. What's happening over there? Well, over there is becoming over here. It's also raining a lot. We might we might get dumped on in a few minutes here. We started our hike on the Fire Wave Trail, knowing for sure we wanted to see the Fire Wave area as well as Pink Canyon. And from there, if we had time, we were going to continue on to the White Domes portion of the trail. Now, unfortunately, we got a little bit later start than expected, and the sunset this time of year is quite early, so we were only able to do the first portion of the trail. But the variety of colors and rock formations just in the short hike that we did was truly amazing. And this is a place that we definitely wanna come back to when we have a little bit more time. Just got back to the trucks, starting to get dark out. Not many people left here. All right, we're gonna get out of here and go try to find somewhere to camp. What'd you guys think of the trail? Yeah, man, it was fun. I wish we had 
left a little earlier, maybe do the whole thing, but we got to see some goats. That was pretty cool. It was crazy how many different colors the rock was. Yeah, 10 out of 10 would hike again. Up until this point of our trip, the weather had pretty much cooperated, but that was about to change. Just after dark, we got onto the Bitter Springs Trail that we'd be taking for the next few days. And of course, it immediately started pouring rain and getting very windy. We eventually found what seemed like a good spot to set up camp and immediately got a fire going to try to warm ourselves up. And from there we managed to use my awning and a large tarp to set up a little bit of shelter from the elements and make ourselves some dinner. We got some spicy sausos. We gonna toast the buns. We got some cheese and salami. Some olives if you want. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What do you got going on? Got a little foil packet meal over the fire. Some salmon, veggies, and rice. That's cooking up nice right now. And we should be eating soon here. As the evening went on, the rain tapered off quite a bit, but the wind gusts were pretty insane and we were worried the tarp and awning were just about to get blown away, so we actually rearranged our camp and were able to set up so we could still enjoy the fire for a few more hours. As I headed to bed, there was a light rain falling on the tent and it was a super relaxing way to fall asleep and reminisce on the day we had had. We had arrived in this area after dark and really didn't have much of an idea of what the landscape was going to be like around us. The next morning, the clouds had cleared, the sun was shining bright, and we were set up next to a huge canyon wall with amazing views all around us. After everyone woke up, we decided we would walk around a little bit before sitting down to have breakfast. So we are on the Bitter Springs Trail right now, and this is BLM land just south of Valley of Fire. We set up camp last night along the trail, and it was really rainy and windy, but we definitely made the best of it. So this morning we're not in too much of a rush. We're going to explore the trail a little bit more, probably take our time at camp this morning, and then make our way down the trail a little bit more throughout the day and try to find another awesome spot to camp. We spent some time relaxing around the fire and then decided this could be a cool spot to get some footage of the Rivian drifting around in the desert. And my buddy Jonathan was down to help out.
After that fun, it was time for breakfast. Dom cooked up an awesome egg scramble. We had some tamales, some avocado. We were all nice and full and spent a little bit more time relaxing before we packed up and got ready to head out on the trail. Our second day on the Bitter Springs Trail, we knew the middle portion was going to be more open and flat, and we wanted to get to the last couple miles of this trail where we knew there'd be some cooler spots to camp and hopefully find some interesting rock formations. Later in the day, we started to encounter some more interesting terrain, and at one point we came around a corner to a giant wall of red rock. Now we considered camping in this spot, but it was a little too exposed and open, and the wind again was starting to pick up, so we decided to continue a little bit further down the trail to see what we could find. set up at camp here we found a really cool red rock formation to nestle up against and we've got the trucks all set up with the tents open gonna get a fire going here because it's pretty chilly right now and then hopefully get some food started dom's got his truck off to the left jonathan's got the awesome taco with the gfc opened up vic's hanging out in a tent behind the truck over there and then the Rivian is set up with the eye camper off to the right here. Time to make a fire and warm up.
just as we were all heading to bed, the wind really started picking up and this would continue for the remainder of our trip. Temperature is about 43 right now, but with the wind and the rain, it feels way colder than that. We're just about done packing up camp, so we're going to finish out this trail. We only have a few miles left here, so it shouldn't take us too long. And then we'll be back on the highway heading home. Finishing off the last few miles of this trail, I was really impressed with how well the Rivian had done on this trip. We had covered a good amount of miles both on and off road, camped for three nights, and I still had plenty of miles to make it back to Las Vegas to charge up. If you're interested in a little behind the scenes of how I planned this trip, as well as where I did stop to charge, stay tuned for the next portion of this video. So as I mentioned early in the video, we left on a Friday evening after work. And if you live in Southern California, you know this is the worst time for traffic. We definitely hit a lot of it. And our first stop was in Barstow. I stopped at a Rivian Adventure Network charger while the rest of the guys went to get groceries. And I was actually done charging before they were done shopping for food, which was pretty funny. But the Rivian charger worked great, charging speed was very fast, and overall I was super impressed with how easy it was. From Barstow, we headed to Las Vegas. This was the final planned charging stop for the truck, 
and we stopped at an Electrify America station that was actually on the strip and it was completely empty. So while the truck was charging, we walked around a little bit and found an awesome spot for some pizza. Got back to the truck, it had 100% charge and we were ready to head out on our adventure. So after the charging station, I had roughly planned out a route before the trip just to make sure it was within the range of the truck. The loop from the charging station in downtown Las Vegas up the highway into Valley of Fire State Park and then south down to the Bitter Springs Trail and all the way back was about 161 miles. Now we ended up taking a slightly different route than this just because a gate was closed here. So we actually had to backtrack a little bit and take a different portion of road to get to the trail. But the overall miles covered was well within the range of the truck. There was a lot of ascent and descent in these roads though. So a lot of up and down and uphills definitely drain range quicker than flat roads do. And we also had a really gnarly headwind um, heading back into Las Vegas on the final day as we made our way south here. But overall, this trip was really stress-free in terms of range and being able to go out for basically four days and three nights of exploring and not having to worry about charging the truck was pretty awesome. All right, that wraps up this adventure. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, check out some of the other videos on the channel. As always, I've got a lot more trips and content coming your way. Thanks for watching, everyone.